Hey guys, Filthy Robot here, bringing another guides, tips, and tricks video. This time we're talking about how good is the abomination. Um, quick uh, disclaimer going into this, I will be approaching these guide videos as if you were playing on hard mode and as if you were playing with no light. And I'm doing this because anything that I tell you in uh, about that set of scenario, that set of circumstances, which is the hardest set of circumstances that Darkest Dungeon can provide to you. That's the hardest environment you're ever going to have to face. Anything I tell you on that difficulty level is going to be applicable on lower difficulty levels. It's still going to work at lower difficulty levels, and it's not always true the other way around. So we're going to we're going to approach it from that way. Uh, the other thing I want to just call to your attention is uh, beneath my webcam, you guys will see a screen capture of uh, part of an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, and you'll see two lines. The first line, the top line, is the, in this case, the Abomination's individual stats at max level, and that will compare it to the average stats of all of the heroes at max level uh, in the Darkest Dungeon. So you can see what the Abomination excels at uh, and what it's weak at compared to the other classes in the game. And we're going to talk through those stats uh, as we get go through into this video. So, all right, Abomination, high HP. I like HP in this game. Um, Oftentimes, HP is not all that important. The more, the more healing you have, the less important HP becomes. Um, but, you, but having high raw HP allows you to survive um, spikes in damage, like bosses, criticals, this type of stuff, where a single crit doesn't put you on death's door. I like high HP. It's probably the most reliable defensive statistic in the game. Uh, and the Abomination has a big chunk of HP in this game compared to the other classes. Um, dodge, dodge is the opposite for me. On a long time scale, dodge is hypothetically a decent stat. Uh, it's a flat dam. It's a percent damage reduction. The problem is uh, in Darkest Dungeon, what kills you are a series of unlikely events together. Uh, things like a couple criticals, like two criticals in a row, and the second critical has a dot component to it. So that's the type of things that kills heroes in Darkest Dungeons. And dodge isn't consistent enough for me to be something I like. In addition, when you play on no light, the enemies have a pretty large accuracy bonus. And when you're playing on no light and hard mode and going into the harder dungeons, the ones where you're most worried about your hero survival, things like the final dungeons, the dungeons you have to beat the game, you often in that mode encounter enemies with huge accuracy. For example, the highest dodge character in the game right now is the Jester. The Jester has 35 base dodge at max level. The enemies in the darkest dungeon, some of them have an accuracy of 133 on their skills, which means that even with 35 dodge, they have a 98% chance to hit you. Hit percentage is capped at 90%. What that means is if you just bring a dodge character in who's whose stats are balanced in such a way that they have a lot of dodge and less HP, the, the dodge component actually contributes zero survivability to that character. So if you're just using base, base values, if you're not using dodge items specifically and you're not using uh, dodge specific strategies like Houndmaster dodge tanking or something like this, dodge is almost always an attribute that has no value in of itself and cost you HP to get. Because when the devs balance the game, they go, oh, this guy's got a lot of dodge, we're not gonna give him much HP. So I don't tend to like dodge very much as an attribute. And on the Abomination, I don't think very much of it at all. Um, speed of nine is really, really good. Uh, it's quite high, it's much higher than the average. Um, uh, high speed means you act before the opponents do in rounds, which means you can either kill them with damage or stun them with stuns before they get a chance to do something. Uh, it's a really good stat overall, especially on high health characters. The only time speed is a negative stat is if your character goes before your healer even after he's on death's door. So when you get when you when you reach zero HP in this game, you hit the the you hit an ability, uh, a state called death's door, where um, any damage above and beyond what would put you to zero isn't applied. So if you were at one health and you took a hundred damage, you're at zero health. You're not at negative ninety nine health. Um, and the next ability that hits you, the next damage that it hits you, has a chance to kill you. Um, and Having a high, and when you're at death's door, you have a minus speed debuff for the next round, so you go a little bit slower. And the only time speed is a detrimental attribute is basically, is if you got hit at the end of a round, put you down to uh, zero health, which triggers the death's door debuff. The death's door debuff slows you down, and you're still massively faster than your healer. Because in a scenario like that, you might go again, and then uh, you might go again before the healer has a chance to heal you, and you might die to something like a dot then. So in general, speed is really good. And speed combined with eight large amounts of HP is also really, really good. So this is a really nice combo. 
Uh, low critical percentage. Criticals are something, again, I don't really like for their inconsistencies. Enemy criticals are much more devastating than friendly criticals are good. Um, however, criticals do provide a small amount of stress healing every time you crit, which is a nice little thing. And occasionally you'll get lucky with a critical hitting a target that you'd really like to kill in one action, and you only had one action to do it, so that can be good too. And criticals on stuns are really, really nice because you're not planning on the stun killing something. You weren't planning on a critical one way or the other, but it provides a small amount of stress healing. A low crit percentage on a character is a little bit of a bummer because it means they won't reliably crit heal, especially on a character like the Abomination, which I think is actually a stunning character, but more about that later. So low crit, not a huge deal, uh, but it's not not a nice stat to have. Uh, very high damage on the Abomination um, as a, as a average, uh, which is great. And that's before we take into effect some of their other abilities, which we'll talk about later. Um, good stun resistance, uh, excellent blight resistance. I believe it's the best blight resistance in the game. Um, okay bleed resistance, okay disease resistance, okay move resistance, a little bit subpar debuff resistance and fairly bad at trap disarm and has one movement forward or two movements back. That's adequate for the Abomination's role in most cases, especially since the Abomination is a viable character uh, in positions two or three, which means that a single move will bring you to one of the positions they're viable in. So if you get shuffled out of position, the Abomination can very easily make it back in a single move to a location that they're good at, which is good. In other words, these are very, very solid stats. Uh, compared to uh, the stats of other characters. Let's take a look at the actual skill stuff in here. Um, I recognize basically four roles in this game. I see stunning, damage dealing, stress healing, and healing as the primary four roles that I look for uh, when I'm building a party composition. When I, want, when I build party compositions, I want to have as many of those roles as many times as possible in that party composition, essentially. Um, the Abomination is primarily a stunner and secondarily, a damage dealer. Uh, Abomination makes a great stunner. Uh, Abomination, this preferred position makes me laugh every time I read this for the Abomination. Abomination really should be in positions two or three. Um, the bulk of their, their skill usage is always going to be better in two or three, and they lose access to some of their primary abilities being in position one. Um, the Abomination in human form, the Abomination has two forms. The first of these is human form, the second of these is beast form. In human form, they have access to these four abilities here. Um, this is a stun and it's a decent percentage stun, so the chance of stunning that percentage is fairly good, um, and it is castable from rank two or three. Uh, and with the Abomination being very, very fast, this means that most times the Abomination will act before a significant percentage of the opponents uh, would have an action, so you can deny them actions. Opponents that are stunned, they can't do damage to you, they can't cause you stress, so it's pretty excellent all around. Um, this is the primary ability of the Abomination. Um, Secondary ability, the other ability I'd say you use the next most is probably Absolution. Absolution is a strength, uh, a small, small to moderate. I'd say, actually, I'd say, I should just go with moderate. It's a moderate health heal and a large stress heal that's uh, only applicable to the Abomination. It can be used from any position. That's his probably secondary ability that you'll be using. Anytime you have a free round at the end of combat where it's uh, you having an action isn't going to allow the opponent to have another action, but you have a free action that you don't need to attack the opponent with, that's a great time to use Absolution. It means that your healer and your stress healer can be helping other characters instead, and the Abomination can essentially take care of himself when he's getting a little bit a little bit low. It's an excellent ability for recovering at the end of a fight. Okay, um, he also has a Blight. The, this is a position two, three Blight. It's situationally useful versus bosses or sometimes last hitting a character that's a very low health, but most times you won't be bothering with Beast Bile. It's just not all that good of an ability. Finally, his fourth human form ability is Transform. When you Transform, you get an additional Blight resist, additional speed, and a damage buff. All three things of these things are really powerful, especially because you're not going to transform very often. And when you do, you're doing this almost always for the fact that you need damage. You need high damage on demand right now. Uh, and all of these things are good for a damage dealer. Going faster is good for a damage dealer. It means you go ahead of the opponent that you're trying to kill, which might reduce their, their number of attacks. And it also means you get additional damage. The downside of transform, and this is why you rarely use the ability, is it causes a large amount of stress to all the characters in your party which means that most times when you're fighting just regular trash mobs and not fighting a boss, it's not worth using Transform. The amount of stress it's giving to the party is too large. Um, additionally, Transform will give your Abomination itself stress uh, every round that you stay transformed for, uh, but you don't tend to stay transformed for all that many rounds, so that element doesn't tend to be as impactful as the other element. What this means as a whole is the Abomination spends most of its time in human form stunning, is what you're going to be doing 90% of the time with the Abomination. 
Um, Abomination in beast form is a very solid damage dealer. It uh, mostly does damage from position one, two, but it can uh, move forward from position three if it gets knocked back. It has a very powerful AOE attack called Rake that uh, stacks, that basically Rake is minus 40% damage while you're using it, but every time you use Rake, it gives yourself a plus 17% damage modifier. Um, these are additive bonuses, so two Rakes is plus 34% and minus 40, which means you're almost doing the raw damage you do uh, normally to two targets after you've used Rake twice. This is particularly nice in a couple fights, mostly again boss fights, in particular the Shambler. If you can set it up so you're hitting one tentacle and the Shambler itself, that works out really, really well for using Rake. It makes him a very, very strong damage dealer in that situation. Um, all right, so that's kind of the primary, builds, uh, the primary abilities of the Abomination. Uh, the camping skills are also fairly unique. I like their camping skills. Um, they're situational most of the time. Um, Eldritch Blood is really cool. The Abomination, who already has the highest Blight Resist in the game, gets even more Blight Resist when transforms into Abomination form. And then uh, also can get a Blight and Bleed Resist uh, buff uh, when you camp, which means that versus certain bosses that are very Bleed or Blight heavy, I'm thinking the Flesh in particular, but there's lots of bosses that have that. These are very, very nice camp. This is a very, very nice camping skill to have. The debuff element of it, the plus 20% stress, can be cured using herbs, which means that uh, you can plan if you're planning on using this 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 uh, defensive buff here, you can get rid of the negative portion of this, so it basically has no negative cost. And at time cost three, it's a fairly cheap ability for how how powerful it is. Uh, the quickening is always nice. Again, on a stunner, you want your stunners and your damage dealers to go ahead of the enemies as much as possible. Plus speed, of course, is going to be very good for that. Again, the downside of speed is sometimes you're faster in your healer and you die for it. But the Abomination is particularly good at resisting bleeds and blights. So it's less of a concern for the Abomination than it is for a lot of other speedy classes. Uh, Psych Up is a damage buff. It's 25% damage buff, which is quite a lot of damage. Um, but it comes at plus 20 stress, which is a little bit of a payment. And it competes with a lot of other four cost skills that are better or as good on other classes this is probably his least this is probably one of his weaker uh, class specific camping skills although it still has use because again why are you bringing abomination you bring him because he fulfills the stun roll for most of the time and then when you get to specific areas like where you're racing a boss like i'm thinking the hag fight in particular suddenly you have a, a strong reason to want to use uh, a high damage character so if you can turn your stunner into a damage dealer on demand well, that's a pretty cool time to, to have something like Psych Up, and it's also a pretty time, cool time to have the Abomination. All right, and then Anger Management is a uh, group stress, re uh, well, it's all other companions stress reduction while the Abomination gains stress. It's okay, but it's probably not all that good. Uh, I probably wouldn't go out of your way to uh, invest in that. Okay, um, one other thing to mention about the Abomination is the Abomination cannot go on missions, uh, cannot enter dungeons with religious characters in your group. Uh, there are, I believe, four religious classes in the game right now. It's Crusader, uh, Vestal, uh, Leper, and Flagellant are all uh, religious classes. And it's a surprisingly big problem uh, because there are only three stress healers, three real stress healers in the game. And those are the Crusader, the Jester, and the uh, Houndmaster. Those are the only classes that can reliably uh, remove stress off of other targets as well as themselves. Um, and the Abomination can't go with one of those. So that immediately removes the number of available stress healers the Abomination can be paired with. And the Abomination, ideally, if you're using, if you got to use their transform all the time, would actually really like to be paired with a stress, with a stress healer. Um, additionally, there's only one class in the game that can AoE heal, and that's the Vestal. And AoE healing in this game is extremely overpowered. And it's extremely powerful, not only for the obvious kind of recovery element of it, where you're healing more across your team by using an AOE heal than you would by single target healing each of them. It's overpowered because of the way that Death's Door works. Um, with Death's Door, when you reach zero health, all the extra damage that that attack had doesn't kill you. So in other words, if again, if you get hit for 100 damage and you're at one health, the one health is equivalent to 100, 100 health there in that scenario. Because all the damage just reduces you to zero still, and then you have the death door element coming into play. Which means if you're taking a lot of damage across your team, like for example, if you're fighting a boss that AOEs you, think like the Swine God, uh, where he's attacking multiple targets for a lot of damage every single round, it doesn't actually matter if you can heal for one point of damage or 100 points of damage on those characters, because each hit is gonna bring you back down to zero anyways. And what that means is if you can 
at the same time increase everybody's health pull excuse me at the same time pull people off of death's door while simultaneously healing other people or sometimes pulling two people simultaneously off of death's door that ability is extremely extremely valuable and the only class that can do that is the vestal arguably maybe the flagellant but it's not quite the same thing the only person who can reliably do that is the is the vestal and that's super powerful that means on a lot of the hardest fights in the game the vestal is above and beyond uh, any other class, the best healer for that environment. And unfortunately, the Abomination can't be paired with the Vestal. And that's a really big blow because the Abomination as a, as a standalone class is great, but that downside of uh, the pairings with other classes is a huge problem. Okay, so that only leaves one last thing I want to talk about with the Abomination, and that is the, uh, that is the overall rating of the class. What do I give it? I'm going to use a, a pretty simple scale for this. It's just going to be three points, kind of. Um, and those are going to be strong, average, or weak. Um, individually, the skills of the Abomination are amazing. They would absolutely, between camping skills and regular skills, be strong, the speed, uh, damage, health, flexibility, uh, ability to babysit itself with absolution. Uh, all of these things, flexibility in terms of movement, it has good movement options. All of these things are amazing. This should make this a very, very strong character. But I'm actually going to give it an average rating. And I'm going to give it an average rating because it just does not, it's not able to pair with the most powerful healer in the game that is the only real healer for uh, some of the hardest uh, encounters that are available in the game, which means you can't bring the Abomination to some of the hardest counters that are available in the game, which is a big kind of uh, a blow to the Abomination. All right, guys, hopefully this video was interesting and informative for you guys. Uh, I'm going to be doing one of these for each of the class videos. Um, so let me know what you think of it, and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.